Hi everyone! In this video I will talk about the behavior of a composite beam under bending conditions. Suppose we have this beam with length L between these two fixed support and we are applying load P at the middle and we are in elastic region. So as the load is applied in the middle, the reaction forces would be equal at each of these fixed supports. So we would have P over 2 reaction forces at each of these two supports. The beam starts taking the shape of a circular arc and we can calculate the moment along this beam. At the middle we would have P over 2 times L over 2 because moment is load times distance. So at mid span we would have PL over 4 as the moment, which is the maximum moment. We can also calculate the moment along the axis of the beam from this relation. So moment starts from 0 at this end, increases up to its maximum in the middle, and decreases to 0 on the other end of the beam. Notice that the top surface of the beam is under compression, the bottom surface is under tensile stress. So when the moment is positive, we would have compression on top and tension at the bottom surface. And compression is considered negative, tension as positive. You can calculate stress on top and bottom using this relation. So you have moment, y is distance from the axis of the beam, and i is moment of inertia of the cross-sectional area of the beam. Notice that on top surface we have decrease in length, on bottom surface we have elongation, but at the middle we would have a neutral axis with no strain. So the length at the middle would, um, would have no changes, changes in length. This is called neutral axis. Neutral axis is the axis of the element which is free of any strain and the length would remain constant. So you can calculate maximum stress on top or bottom using this relation as you have the maximum moment PL over 4, you can plug it into this relation and calculate maximum compression on top and maximum tension on, at the bottom surface. Now we can also calculate the deflection of the beam at the middle using this equation, PLQ over 48 EI. E is Young modulus and I is moment of inertia of the cross-sectional area. Now suppose we want to calculate the deflection of two beams, a wood beam placed on top of a steel beam, and these two beams are not uh, bonded together. So this figure is showing the cross-sectional area of two beams, and the load P is applied at the middle, so the deflection would be equal for both beams and we would have this relation for deflection. P1 L cubed over 48 E1 I1 which is equal to P2 L cubed over 48 E2 I2. So P1 and P2 are the unknowns, the other parameters are known. L is the length of the beam, which is equal for both beams. E1 is Young modulus of wood. I is moment of inertia of wood. And the same here, we have Young modulus of steel and moment of inertia of cross-sectional area of steel. And L is uh, equal for both of them. Moment of inertia can be calculated using this relation, EH cubed over 12, 
So you have B and a height for both material and we can calculate the moment of inertia. And we also know that load is distributed between these two beams. So P1 plus P2 would return P. So using this equation, we can plug into this one and solve for P1 or P2 and finally get to this relation. So the deflection for unbolted beams can be calculated using this relation. This would give you the analytical deflection. You can also compare it with your experimental results for deflection at any applied load. This time we bolted these two beams and uh, made this composite beam and we want to calculate the deflection under similar bending conditions as we apply load P at the middle. So if you consider each of these beams separately, they have their own neutral axis which is located at the middle because they are symmetric. But the composite beam has a different neutral axis, which must be located. And it is somewhere between these two axes. In order to locate this uh, neutral axis of the composite, you need to convert the cross-sectional area to a transformed cross-sectional area where both sections are made of similar material. So I'm considering wood. You can convert to steel as well. So this transformed cross-sectional area has um, n times b for the width of the bottom section and b at the width of the top section, similar to this one here. So they are equal in the strength. When you apply load, the deflection would be equal for both of them. And this uh, N is the ratio of Young moduli of these two materials. So E of steel over E of wood. Now you're ready to locate this uh, neutral axis in the composite. So we have neutral axis of uh, each of these sections, which are located in the middle. We can locate this one. So Y bar is what we're looking for, we can plug into this equation. So we have the vertical distance of neutral axis of in this bottom section, the vertical distance of the top section. We can plug into this equation and calculate Y bar, which is the vertical distance of the neutral axis of the entire composite. Once Y bar is calculated, you can plug into this equation and here you need D1 and D2, which is the distance between the neutral axis of the composite and the um, section 1 and the distance between neutral axis of the composite and neutral axis of section, one, and section 2. So you have these two parameters, you can plug into this equation. And once you get this transformed moment of inertia, you can plug into this equation and get the deflection. So in summary, for unbolted beam, you can calculate this uh, deflection from this equation. For bolted composite, you need to first calculate the transform moment of inertia, then plug into this equation and get the result. And finally, you would see the deflection in bolted composite is considerably less than what we get for the deflection of unbolted B. For the experiment we did in the lab, uh, I calculated transform moment of inertia and it would be uh, approximately 9.82 inches to the power of 4. So this one uh, would get uh, would be the analytical deflection 
that you can compare with your experimental results.